In this market update, we're gonna take a deeper dive into residential properties um, that are within rental communities that are ocean oriented. So what we're talking about is sea pines, shipyard, palmetto dunes, forest beach, and folly beach. So the residential properties in those locations, we're gonna look at, at sales history and sales projections. We're gonna look at inventory. We're going to look at days on the market. We're going to see how negotiations are happening. So what I'm hoping to get across here is if you own one of these homes and you're thinking about selling, your expectations get set in that this is what's happening and this is what you can expect to have happen in the future. If you're looking to buy one of these homes, same thing applies. You know, here's what you can expect. Here's the average negotiations. Here's how long the homes are sitting on the market. Um, really just just make sure that everybody is aware of what's going on in this specific market. So from here, let's jump right in, take a look at pricing, and we'll roll from there. So if we look at this first chart, what we're looking at here, pricing trends. So we're looking year over year over the last five years. Again, we're looking at residential properties in Sea Pine, Shipyard, uh, Palmetto Dunes, Forest, and Folly Beach. And you can see just like the rest of, of the communities and the rest of the industry, prices have just gone crazy over the last few years. Now, if we look at, at month over month over the year of 2022, it changes a little bit in that, you know, June seemed to look like the peak of our market. Um, and I say it seemed to look like, because obviously you can see we're starting to climb our way back up when it comes to, to prices for our residential houses in these communities. Um, June was about the time that we started blasting interest rates. Um, June was about the time that we started getting you know, bad economic news. Like the world started to kind of fall apart here in June. And that's what we saw with regard to our real estate. Everybody paused and said, well, let's take a break and let's see, let's see what happens. As we've kind of gotten used to interest rates being bumped and really they're not moving all that much beyond six, six and a quarter right now, um, our buyers have come back. And as our buyers have come back, they have started to, to buy our houses at, you know, we're back to June numbers, which is, is really kind of astonishing. But you can see the price trends here. We are, are have been moving up since the middle of the year. Hopefully this continues through January and, and February. I think it will for this market. And there'll be more to explain as we move forward and look at some of the other data. So interestingly enough, as our prices have gone up since July, and we've been in that steady upward movement for our prices, our negotiations have also, and I know it looks like they go down here on this chart, but our negotiations have also gone up. So what I mean by that is through July, there were no negotiations on price. What you listed your home for is what you were getting for your home. From there, we've started to see some negotiations, uh, upwards of almost, you know, we're over 5% negotiations in December. Although our prices in December are back to, to June numbers. So as prices go up, we're, we're, we've been willing to negotiate a little bit more. Now, what does that tell me? That tells me that we're probably overpricing our houses. We're probably holding on to the, the, the good times of 2022 and, and really afraid of the bad times of 2022, 2023. Um, so our prices are, are, we're inflating them at the list price. And because every seller's home is the best home in the community, every seller's home has the best view, has the best bathrooms, it's the best. Uh, we know that from talking to all of our sellers. What's interesting, buyers are willing to pay 2022 prices. They're, they're, they're willing to pay those prices. We're listing it above those prices, but they're willing, they're showing us that they're willing to pay those prices based on what our, our sales price data showed us over the year of 2022. We're pricing them a little bit higher, therefore we're having to negotiate to get back to that number. So sellers, if you take a look at this, 
realize that when you look at the comps, your home is worth the comps. The prices aren't going up, prices are steady. Your home is worth the comps. When you overprice it, you're gonna sit on the market, and, and we may see this, you're gonna sit on the market a little bit longer, you're gonna negotiate a little bit more, and you're gonna come down to the price that you should have been at from the beginning. My theory has always been, if you price where you should be from the beginning, you give yourself the best chance to make the most money, to sell your home for the most money. If everyone else around you is, is overpricing and not selling, and you price accordingly, your home looks attractive to those that competition. If your home looks attractive to that competition, you attract more buyers. The more buyers that you attract, the more opportunities for, for offers you're gonna get. When you get two of them, all of a sudden we've got competition, and that's what makes our prices go up. So if we see if our theory is correct. We're overpricing houses, we're staying on the market longer. The next slide is gonna show us that that's the case. So we're looking at our days on the market. Uh, we saw that there were very little to no negotiations through June and July, then all of a sudden we started to negotiate. As we start to negotiate, the question is, why are we negotiating all of a sudden? Well, that's because your house is sitting on the market for a little while. The longer your home sits on the market, the more a buyer wants you to negotiate in order to sell that home the more you secretly want to get that home sold. Whether you say it or not, you're putting your home on the market because you have a plan and you want that home to, and, and part of your plan, part of your goal is getting that home sold so that we can see the rest of the plan through. The longer you sit, the less likely it is that that plan is coming together, the more you're going to be willing to negotiate on the sales price of that house. So the, this, this, uh, slide here this chart here shows us the trend that we are starting to have our home sit for a little bit longer when that happens we become a little bit more willing to negotiate and if you look at, at you know May June July August we're less than you know we're two less than three weeks on the market before we're getting offers most of those probably multiple offers even in this crazy you know 1.5 million dollar price range when you have a single family home in these communities, you, you, know, you and I know there are way more villas and condos than there are single family homes in these communities. The single family home in a rental community is a unique home. There aren't many of them out there. And if that's the case, that there's a, an uptick in demand, that there's lower supply, the demand doesn't really change. Therefore, as a buyer, I don't have a lot to choose from. And if that's the case, I'm gonna pay for what's out there. So as things start to sit on the market longer, if inventory starts to grow, which will be our next slide, then you're, you're, you're going to look at, I gotta negotiate to get this thing, this thing sold, which is obviously what has happened. So in our last slide, we're gonna take a look at the inventory. How many homes are, are out there for buyers to choose from? What do we have to worry about with regard to competition as the seller and buyers what, um, you know, what, what are the chances that you're gonna find your home in this market? When we look at this chart, you know, leave it up to the data to, to boggle our minds. If homes are staying on the market longer for days on the market, you would suspect that we are going to have more inventory on the market. It's not the case. What we have here is that our, our we peaked in September, with a little over six months worth of inventory. That's a lot, that, that, that's a normal market. All of a sudden, I think you know, buyers saw there are homes out there, there's negotiation going on, even though it's not affecting prices, there's negotiation going on, and all of a sudden, we started to sell those houses. Now sellers, you might have gotten wise to the market and said, I'm not putting my home on the market it, it, right now. The, the market's junk, I, I don't wanna be out there, I don't wanna negotiate, I wanna sell for top dollar, I don't wanna, sell for anything less. So it could be that sellers have said, we're not putting our homes out on the market. But right now we're just over 4%, or I'm sorry, four months worth of, of inventory. That's not a lot of homes out there. So ultimately, if I'm a seller, I'm looking at inventory numbers and saying, it's a pretty good time to put my home on the market. There's not a lot of competition. If I'm a buyer and I wanna buy one of these homes, I'm saying, there's not a lot for me to choose from. So if I don't like what's on the market right now, I'm just gonna have to sit and wait. And here's what happens when buyers sit and wait. And here's what happens almost all the time in these winter markets. 
sellers hold off on putting their homes on the market until the market heats up. The market heats up in, in uh, the spring. If I am waiting to put my home on the market in the spring, I am you know, doing all the things to get it perfect right now. I have buyers who have been trying to buy homes for months, but don't like what they see. As soon as one comes to the market that they like in March, April, May, whatever that, that time frame is that you get your home ready, they're gonna jump all over it because they've seen enough homes to know what they don't like. As soon as they see the one they like, they're gonna jump on it. So what's that gonna do? It's gonna lower our days on the market. It's gonna, it's gonna lower our negotiations. You just put it on the market, you're not gonna negotiate. So there's gonna be no negotiations. And all of a sudden, all those sales numbers start to go up as opposed to, in our case, we'll, we'll say going down. Even though it's days on the market going up, inventory going up, negotiations going up, all that stuff goes in the opposite direction in the spring when when buyers are out here trying to find what they want, trying to find something they love, but they can't because it's all just the leftover stuff from 2022. So that's typically what we see in the spring. So I would suspect that inventory numbers will go down a little bit. I would suspect that our prices will probably go up a little bit in the spring. I would suspect that our days on the market and our negotiations will go down a little bit and, and sellers will still kind of be in a position to, to be really strong. And really that's just because there's not a lot on the market right now. And as things come, they're gonna go pretty fast if they're, if they're priced correctly and they're in, in the right condition.